jealousy, rage, love, and fear are at once tearing me to pieces, how I am weather beaten and shattered with distresses. My life has given me usual toast, the sign of the wind is real, the world is broken to break her love, she's out of the dark or dawn. Well, the sign I rolled in your toast in all night, the poly has sporting on season of delight, revenge, revenge, revenge. I have the rat's bane ready. I run no risk, for I can lay her death upon the gin. And so many die of that naturally that I shall never be called in question. <laughs> but say I were to be hanged. I never could be hanged for anything that would give me greater comfort than poisoning that slut. Ma'am, here's our Miss Polly come to call upon you. Show her in. Dear Madame, your servant, I hope you will pardon my passion when I was so happy to see you last. I was so overrun with the spleen that I was perfectly out of myself. And really, when one hath the spleen, everything is to be excused by a friend. Madame, I have no excuse for my own behaviour but my misfortunes. And really, madame, I suffer too upon your account. Oh, but, Miss Polly, in the way of friendship, will you give me leave to propose a glass of cordial to you? Strong waters are apt to give me the headache. I hope, madame, you will excuse me. You seem mighty low in spirits, my dear. Madame, the captain treated me with such contempt and cruelty that I deserved your pity rather than your resentment. Oh. But since his escape, no doubt all matters are made up again. Ah, oh, Polly. Polly, tis I am the unhappy wife, and he loves you as if you were only his mistress. Sure, you cannot think me so happy as to be the object of your jealousy. A man is always afraid of a woman who loves him too well. Therefore, I must expect to be neglected and avoided. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Then our cases, my dear Polly, are exactly alike. Both of us, indeed, have been too fond. Take it monstrously ill if you refuse me. I protest, madam, it goes against me. <gasps> what do I see? McKeith in custody. Now every glimmering of happiness is lost. <sighs> Since things are thus, 
I'm glad the wench hath escaped, for by this event, tis plain she was not happy enough to deserve to be poisoned. Set your heart to rest, Captain. You have neither the chance of love nor money for another escape, for you are ordered to be called down upon your trial immediately. by his wives. Oh, husband, husband, my heart long to see thee, but to see thee thus distracts me. Oh, not my dear husband, look upon his Polly. Why hast thou not looked to me for protection? With me thou hast been safe. at an end without my disobliging either of you. <laughs> Which way shall I turn me off? Can I decide? Twice a day of our death are as one as a One wife is too much for most husbands to hear. But two at a time there's no more to bear. This way I will. Which way I will. But if his own misfortunes have made him insensible to mine, a father sure will be more compassionate. Dear, dear sir, sink the material evidence and bring him off at his trial. Polly upon her knees begs it of you. Oh, <laughs> 